So welcome to American Brachytherapy Society series on prostate cancer. So today's topic is going to be androgen deprivation therapy and brachytherapy, the good, the bad, and the ugly. My name is Mira Keys. I'm a clinical professor in radiation oncology at Department of Surgery at UBC in Vancouver in Canada, and I'll be happy to present today on this topic. I have no disclosures. So let's see the good. So we know that uh, hormones are really the foundation of treatment for prostate cancer. And ADT is used for localized disease together with radiation, but also for PSA failure and requires really lifelong uh, treatment after that. And so why do we mix it up with radiation so well? So uh, hormones really affect the microenvironment and hormones induce apoptosis. They inhibit BCL2 and P53 as well as cell proliferation. They also inhibit VEGF and angiogenesis. They increase oxygenation, which is very good for radiation to work better. They shut down the DNA repair, which is androgen receptor effect actually. And they, with all of this, increase radiosensitivity. Hormones also had synergistic effect on both local and distal subclinical disease. So given all of this together, uh, they do mix actually quite well with radiation. And so there is a really a lot of clinical trials that have investigated various different questions about how to combine radiation external beam together with hormones. And so here is a list of various different uh, uh, randomized controlled trials, but this is the conclusion. So when we give the patients uh, uh, ADT plus or minus external beam radiation, we do see that ADT actually increases cost-specific survival as well as PSA recurrence-free survival. And there is a, approximately 10 to 13% uh, uh, increase in overall survival if we combine external beam and ADT together. And then there's a big question as to how long should we give ADT, four to six months versus 28 to 36 months. And uh, there's some trials that we've been looking into the duration of androgen deprivation therapy and longer we'd give it the greater impact and overall survive there is. However, even if we give high dose of radiation, we think that 18 uh, uh, months of radiation possibly could be equivalent to 36 and there's still uh, some unanswered questions. And so uh, I think there will be some more answers coming to that. So if you look at NCCN uh, recommendations for brachytherapy in uh, unfavorable intermediate risk and high-risk disease, in unfavorable intermediate risk, ADT is optional and uh, external beam plus uh, brachytherapy boost with or without four months of ADT is recommended and for high-risk disease, ADT is recommended for between one and three years. If you look at the um, uh, Cancer Care Ontario and, and um, ASCO recommendations for use of brachytherapy. Brachytherapy is a standard of care. Uh, monotherapy, LDR, uh, for low risk and favorable intermediate risk disease. And for unfavorable intermediate risk disease, again, there's a recommendation for a combination of uh, external beam radiation and uh, HDR or LDR boost plus minus ADT. And for high risk, the ADT is recommended. And of course, they do uh, really focus and, and uh, emphasize appropriate patient selection for brachytherapy as well as attention to comorbidities. So I'm just going to present you some trials in brachytherapy. So this is a trial done in-house at the British Columbia Cancer Agency, a SendRT trial that enrolled 400 patients. All patients got 12 months of ADT and then external beam radiation directed to the pelvis, and they were randomized to receive uh, additional boost to the prostate with external beam radiation or prostate brachytherapy boost. And these are four publications that have um, come out so far, including outcomes, toxicity, quality of life, as well as outcomes using surgical definition of cure. This is the SendRT results that were just presented at last ASTRO meeting. So this is a 10-year follow-up. And as you can see, the curves really start to split at five years. And there is a significant absolute difference in PSA recurrent free survival favoring prostate brachytherapy arm. And as the time goes by from seven, nine to 15 years of follow-up, the uh, difference, absolute difference really increases to 27% in 15 years. 
However, overall survival at 12 years is the same for both arms. However, trial was also not really powered to look at um, prostate cancer, specific mortality or overall survival. So um, with only 400 patients. And so this is again to point out that the curves really split at five years. So um, this is a very important point. So Ascend RT, if you now look at the results um, and uh, use a surgical definition of cure with a PSA of less than 0.2, you see that curve significantly now split to the left-hand side is unfavorable intermediate risk group and uh, to the right-hand side is high risk group. And there's absolutely uh, staggering uh, uh, look of these curves that, um, that are not very commonly seen in, in radiation field. There's a, start, a trial from the UK, HDR trial, just recently published from Peter Hoskins and the group. This is 12 year follow up. 76% of the patients got new adjuvant hormones. And then some of them also got uh, adjuvant hormones after that. And this is HDR trial. And so again, you see the significant split in favor of um, uh, HDR arm. And the greatest actually impact is seen in patients who did not receive the ADT. And there's a lesser impact in patients who did receive ADT. And uh, again, overall survival is not significantly different between the two arms. Again, the, the trial was not powered to look at overall survival. This is a third quite interesting trial, TROG uh, or RADAR trial that in included about 1,000 patients. Uh, all the patients are from Australia. Um, the dose escalation uh, was utilized for the trial anywhere between 66 to 70, 74 uh, grays. And then one arm also had HDR. Mind you, the randomization was not between the dose, but randomization was only between six versus 18 months of ADT. So the trial was looking to duration of hormones, plus or minus aldronic acid. And so what the trial show with now 10 year follow up is the local control is better with HDR. Prostate cancer specific mortality improved with 18 months of ADT versus six months of ADT. And most interestingly for this presentation as well, the, the patients who had HDR had 40% absolute reduction in metastases long-term. So best outcomes again were achieved with both 18 months of ADT as well as HDR. There's some ongoing randomized controlled trials looking at the role of androgen deprivation therapy with bracket therapy, RTOG0815 is looking into patients with favorable intermediate risk and randomizing them between external beam radiation or external beam plus bracket therapy boost. And randomization is zero versus six months of ADT. And then RTOG0924 is looking into unfavorable intermediate risk and favorable high-risk patients. And um, again, the choice of dose escalation is left to radiation oncologists and randomization is really between whole pelvis versus prostate radiation only. And then the hormones are given four, six or 32 months in duration. There's also two Japanese trials, uh, SHIP0804 and SHIP36B. They're looking at monotherapy versus combination therapy and uh, role of uh, androgen deprivation therapy. These trials will be reported in the years to come. So American Bracket Therapy Society had published um, systemic literature review on role of androgen deprivation therapy with prostate bracket therapy in 2000, this is publication from 2016. We have used uh, 52 studies for this analysis, a uh, very large number of patients, 43,000 for, uh, for LDR and uh, close to 3,000 patients in seven studies for HDR. And then um, the, question was, does ADT have less biologic effect with brachytherapy because there's such a high intraprostatic dose? So what we found is that, that um, the answer to this question is possibly yes. We found through all of these studies that uh, if we use ADT with brachytherapy, then there is an increase in biochemical progression-free survival up to 15%. 71 studies, 71% 71 of all the studies that we looked at, and we looked at 52 studies, show no ADT benefits. 28% show some benefit, up to 15%. And benefit was mostly seen if uh, the quality of implant was not particularly good. 
as well as in unfavorable intermediate risk and high risk disease. There was no benefit to cause specific survival whatsoever. And uh, interestingly, in studies who have reported overall survival benefit, there was really no survival benefit to giving ADT. However, four out of 20 studies that reported overall survival really showed detriment to overall survival when using ADT with, with uh, prostate brachytherapy. Uh, so these are the data really that uh, made uh, uh, brachytherapists believe that if we use brachytherapy in terms of the boost, we really can um, avoid using ADT altogether in some patients who have high risk disease or unfavorable intermediate risk disease. And so there are two studies actually looking at this issue and they look at the um, large US databases for high risk disease and then for both unfavorable intermediate and high risk disease. And what they found is that the ADT really is used less in patients who have, um, who have brachytherapy. So an absolute difference between those who have just external beam or those who have external beam and brachytherapy is really about 20% for high risk disease and about 10% for intermediate risk disease. And so based on, these, um, based on these two studies, there was an interesting publication in JCO in 2020. And the question was uh, really, if you have a choice between using ADT and external beam radiation or using just external beam radiation and prostate brachytherapy boost, but no ADT, what should you do? What should you use? And, and the findings actually suggest that addition of ADT provides a greater, greater oncological benefit than brachytherapy boost. Um, there is a high probability that intermediate and high-risk prostate cancer treated with external beam radiation ADT have superior overall survival than if you just use external beam and brachytherapy boost. And they suggested that there is actually a great need for randomized controlled trials. My comment would be that point missed here was that benefit of brachytherapy is not that we should completely omit ADT in somebody who has high risk disease, but we can actually reduce the duration of ADT in unfavorable intermediate risk and high risk disease patients. And this will have significant positive impact on quality of life and perhaps on overall survival. So what is the quality of life issue with ADT? Well, these are listed here. There's a significant quality of life issue when it comes to uh, erectile dysfunction, loss of libido, hot flashes, fatigue, anemia, cognitive dysfunction, osteoporosis, and then the whole slur of metabolic syndrome indicators that are listed here. And most importantly, there is probably impact on cardiovascular morbidity and mortality, as well as increased sudden death. So what is now ADT, the bad and the ugly? And is ADT causing excess mortality? So one third of the prostate cancer patients actually have cardiovascular disease. And there are some studies to suggest that. And so the question then becomes, what is the most common cause of death in men who have prostate cancer? Well, that really depends. There is a widely held belief that men with prostate cancer will die with rather than from their disease. But that depends on whether you screen the population or you don't. So these are two interesting studies. One is from the UK. And uh, there is um, data on over 50,000 patients. And really, there is very little screening in the UK. And the cause of death in patients who have prostate cancer in the UK is really in 50% of the cases, prostate cancer. 18% died of cardiovascular disease, 11% of other cancer, 11% of other cancers, and 21% of other causes. And in the US, the cause of death in prostate cancer patient is really, you know, 29% die from other causes and only 6% actually die from prostate cancer. So screening is very different. And uh, in the US versus the UK, and in the US, approximately 50% of the un, un, asymptomatic men are screened versus about 2% or 6% uh, of uh, um, uh, men without any symptoms. So opportunistic screening in the UK is, a, UK is about 6%. So there's a huge difference there. So therefore, the cause of death depends on whether you screen or you don't screen the population. 
this is an interesting article just to illustrate the data on over 1300 patients treated with um, uh, prostate brachytherapy external beam with or without hormones. And when you look at the death and hazard ratio of death for all the patients, disease of the heart caused death in 11% and prostate cancer causes death in 3% of, the, of this uh, cohort. And if you look at high risk population alone, 10% um, of the patients die from prostate cancer and 20% actually die from cardiovascular disease. So primary cause of death in prostate cancer, even in high risk disease, treated with brachytherapy is actually cardiovascular disease, not prostate cancer. So when we look at the randomized controlled data and association of ADT with cardiovascular death, really uh, there is no obvious correlation. So the cardiovascular death in patients who had ADT versus control was not significantly different. So there is no excess cardiovascular death that was seen in randomized controlled trials. However, if you look at this meta-analysis and you look at all the randomized data and you look at observational study, what becomes obvious is that you do see this increased risk of dying in cardiovascular death in observational data, but not in randomized controlled trials. So, and then the question is, why is that? Well, patients who participate in randomized controlled trials are healthier. Randomized controlled trials only really report on fatal cardiovascular events. Observational studies really report also on non-fatal MI, which is really much more sensitive outcomes. And this excess of cardiovascular morbidity and mortality is seen in patients who really have pre-existing cardiovascular disease, and they're usually not included in randomized controlled trials. And all-cause mortality increase by about 11 to 15% absolute difference, and about uh, there's absolute percent about 5% um, of cardiac mortality in patients who have pre-existing cardiovascular disease. And these are the studies to suggest that. So why does that happen? So LHRH agonists um, uh, have a very uh, distinct mode of action. So uh, there is a GNRH receptor on the T cells. And so LHRH actually activate that receptor and T cells get stimulated and they differentiate into inflammatory phenotype. And this inflammatory phenotype attracts the macrophages and these macrophages then infiltrate the plaque with, um, with inflammatory uh, mediators and there is a big inflammatory response in the plaque and this plaque will rupture. So on the right-hand side, you do see two different types of uh, uh, plaques. One is stable plaque and then one is vulnerable or unstable plaque. So these unstable plaques really have a propensity to rupture. And uh, what about LHRH antagonists? Well, so there is some suggestion that this uh, does not happen with LHRH antagonists. There are actually trials that are done to date. Some are randomized trial depicted here by the stars. And it seems that number need to avoid one death by using LHRH antagonist is 12, so quite significant. I think we'll still uh, be looking to, um, to randomized controlled trial that is presently ongoing and uh, that probably will settle out this entire issue. In conclusion, ADT should be avoided in low risk uh, and intermediate risk prostate cancer treated with monotherapy. ADT should be used with unfavorable intermediate risk and high risk patients for only 12 months as supported by randomized controlled trials. And you see here curves from a standard T trial. ADT can be omitted in selected unfavorable intermediate risk and high risk patients based on really exceptionally high Q rates. And shorter duration of IDT will improve quality of life and may increase overall survival and decrease cardiovascular morbidity as well. And so this is one of the benefits of using brachytherapy. Not only patients benefit from higher Q rates, but also from overall less toxicity based on lesser duration of, um, of antigen deprivation therapy during their course of treatment. So with that, I'd like to thanks for your attention. <laughs>